So far on Alex Builds, and despite having no building experience, I decided to build an old style barn on a massively sloping plot. I bought some stone and built a test wall, got some trees cut down, then hired a digger, with which I ruined my garden, pulled out two tree stumps, dug some trenches, cocked up those trenches, and fixed the trenches. I built a concrete chute, through which we cocked up the concrete pour which set with a slope, which we fixed by cutting loads of trench blocks and laying them to offset the slope. I then got my act together, but it rained and snowed really hard. Right, it's take two. Let's pretend yesterday didn't happen. Mm. Although, I did get six or seven blocks down very, very quickly before the snow came. So I've mixed up loads of mortar, mainly because the sand was wet. So I ended up trying to then, well it came out too runny, I had to work it down. So I've got loads, um, I've got the rest of bricks, so I'm going to see how far I can get around this morning. So let's time it again, 5 to 11, let's see what I can do in the next hour. So that's eight blocks in 20 minutes. Four minutes a block. Is that right? That's, that's, that's not correct at all. Two and a half minutes. God, I tell you, my mental arithmetic, as I get older, is hopeless. Eight times two and a half. Two times eight, 16 and a half, yeah. Okay, so that's two and a half minutes a block. Not bad. If I could go at that rate without other prep, I'll get through this in no time, but I can't. Something that I'm more and more aware of is labor saving basically making jobs go a lot faster you might have noticed when i was doing this previous course that i had blocks in the way of where i was trying to work now if you think about it that's ridiculous because these blocks are 22 kilograms each so i've already got to lift the block down here because i can't get my loader quite that far in at the minute and then you have to lift them again so if you're lifting each block block twice often in quite an awkward space that that's not great so what I've done is I've laid this out in such a way that I've got here my working space where I'm going to lay with room for the bucket and then as I do that I can move the bucket and I've got the next two blocks and they're at an angle where they're quite easy to pick up. I've done that all the way down. Looks a bit like a scene from a Prometheus. Anyone? No? Oh, forget it. However, this is a great idea and I was congratulating myself as I did it. But what, of course, is the rather obvious mistake? Well, how the hell am I gonna get a string line in? Okay, so we'll quickly sort that out. That funny combination of snow and sunshine, very peculiar. Anyway, here's a, here's a view of the plot, looking back at the house. It's really, really coming on at pace now. It's starting to get a good feeling about it. By the way, it was around this time that I had a, another delivery of the trench blocks. They, uh, they arrived like this. Uh, and by the way, I get them from TG in Northwich, uh, which I, I like shopping with. Quick shout out to uh, Paul and Phil and Sam and the team there. They're really, really helpful. I recommend them. Anyway, I'm getting a nice bit of drone footage and I completely lost control of the drone. Not because they don't know what I'm doing. It just stopped responding. 
Um, it'd been a lot higher than this, but basically, as you're going to see in a second, it got wedged in a tree. Anyway, please go on to the Alex Builds channel page and you can see how I recovered this drone from a massive height. It's the best video I've ever made, if I may say so myself. So things moving on, on site. We've got the course going all the way around, which is great. But also I've managed to push a load of earth around. And the result of this is that I can load pallets of blocks, eight at a time, pretty much all the way into position. So this is giving us a huge increase in pace. I can just find the time, I'll be able to get the courses down. Only four more to go from here. There's a lot of work still to go. Okay, it's just coming up to 10 a.m. Sunday the 9th of May. Super Sunday because I'm gonna do a whole course. The most I've done in a day is half a course, but that wasn't a full day in fairness. So this should be doable, back and energy permitting. To start here, all the way around, all the way around the back over there, finishing here just slightly out of shot but I've still got the gap here this is to get the loader in and out so we'll do that at the end after this I've got another course so two to do in total and I'm getting a little bit fed up at this stage so I just want to get this course down today maybe the same next week and then we're on to the next phase finally so I had the brilliant idea of mounting the camera in a tree um, normally at this point I'll be giving you a time lapse as you see me whizzing around the site um, but unfortunately it was quite a windy day and although you can't see it that easily in real time the thing is swaying backwards and forwards and it's the most vomit inducing sequence ever when you see it in time lapse so instead I've given you a few cuts and a few segments as I work my way around Well, it's pretty much bang on midday, five past. Here's the top course that I have done. So in two hours, I count 42 blocks, I think. And actually, I think that is halfway, because remember, some are rotated, some are not, so it's quicker to do that section. So that's good. Okay, I absolutely promise you this is the last time lapse of me laying trench block. But as you can see though, I've certainly got my act together in terms of getting them in and getting them down quickly. One thing you might have noticed is that I'm not putting uh, cement or mortar in between the trench blocks. If you look at the bottom left, it looks like I have, but actually that's me just scraping and sealing each one up. But occasionally I use these 105 mil uh, standard concrete blocks just to space things out and in these ones um, I actually do put a joint in between by the way that's called a perpend which is the word for the uh, cement that sits in between blocks or bricks well end of mega Sunday so that's about 90 blocks I've done, which is far and away a record in one day. It's always, I don't know if the camera does it justice, but God almighty, it's looking like a bit of a, a bit of a lump at the minute, a bit of a, a bit of a carbuncle. Okay, I'm just gonna interject here. You can see that I've put about 10 blocks to the left there. Well, actually, I ended up taking them out and this view you see here is actually the final level that I went for, which just leaves us with the end section. So I'm not gonna go into any great detail and subject you to more time lapse. Let's jump forward to the final block. All right, this is it. The last block. Can't believe it. 
Now you don't have to mortar the purpins, but I think there's going to be a small gap. So I thought on this one, let's do it. Over. That's it. We're done. It's May 23rd. I can't remember when I started. At least two months. I'll look it up. Please do that. Well, good God, that was a slog, I can tell you. But it's done now, but it only takes us up to ground level. So next we've got to start thinking about filling that in and then ultimately putting the slab in which will involve more concrete. Thanks for watching please subscribe give the video a like and if you leave me a comment I generally reply to them and remember folks I'm just a DIYer not a builder. See you next time.